Hi, I'm Melissa Cobb, come fly with AOPA. This week, check out the AOPA Sweepstakes Cessna 170's impressive slow flight and stall handling characteristics. AOPA's legal team offers advice for pilots who have deposits down with Vans aircraft and get an up-close look at the Beach AT-11 World War II bombing trainer. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. We showcase the Steen Aviation Sportsman Stole Wing Cuffs on the AOPA Sweepstakes Cessna 170, AOPA social media marketer Kayla Hunt and designated pilot examiner Alan Miller took the 170 up and put it through a series of slow flight installs. I tell you, you have got to see this performance to believe it. Check angle, check angle, check angle, check angle. Let's see what happens when I, that right wing's dropping, I'm going to go left aileron. Wow. It actually worked. Check angle, 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 and we'll go ahead and recover. That's pretty mild mannered right yeah. there. I thought it would do something goofy when I uh, used the aileron, you know, opposite the wing drop. And there was very little wing drop. It, the right wing dropped both times, just a little bit, but it never really stalled. It was just kind of pushing, you know? Yeah, it's very docile. Okay, we'll climb back up a little bit. We'll do a power on, okay? All right. Yeah, I think that's a cool thing about these these sportsman stole wing cuffs. I mean, everything is just, I mean, it's it's really hard to really mess anything up. Well, I haven't had the ball in the middle more in about one second <laughs> as it's transiting through the center, so we haven't had an issue yet. Yeah. Okay. Couple those wing cuffs with the Stutes Aviation STC for the 195 horsepower Continental Prime IO370 engine and other mods that we've made to the Cessna 170. And you'll see that this just performs phenomenally in every different scenario that you can put it through. So remember, the deadline to enter is coming up. It closes December 29th. Visit our official rules page at aopa.org slash sweeps to make sure you're entered for a chance to win this amazing airplane. Well, last week we told you about Vans Aircraft filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Now, AOPA's legal team is following this case very closely. AOPA Senior Vice President of Media and Marketing, Colin Stagnito, recently sat down with AOPA Legal Services Plan Attorney, Jeremy Browner, and they talked about what this bankruptcy protection case means for Vans Aircraft customers. Jeremy, what does the Chapter 11 filing mean? In this particular instance, Van Aircraft uh, is trying to reorganize uh, their debt uh, that they have. Uh, and the policy of the United States is that in the Chapter 11, uh, that the company survives and the jobs are, are there at the detriment to the creditors. Jeremy, in the case of a Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing, there are secured and unsecured creditors. Uh, in this case, who are the secured creditors and who are the unsecured creditors? Well, the uh, actually secured creditors haven't been um, identified yet. The uh, top 15 creditors have been identified in the original voluntary petition, which is the uh, number one on the docket. People like, or entities like engine manufacturers, sheet metal vendors, propeller manufacturers, the things that you would assume are associated with uh, a kit aircraft that the kit manufacturer is not doing themselves. Unsecured creditors are going to be uh, those vendors I just talked about, but for more importantly, the, the kit owners or soon to be kit owners um, are going to be unsecured creditors. And so I understand the unsecured creditors have essentially two options. They can uh, potentially pay more to buy a kit or ask for a refund? Yeah, they're they're going to be given eventually these options, yes. Pay more to continue your order, even though you have an order that you've already paid a set amount already. You may uh, continue that order by paying more, um, or you can ask Vans to uh, get a refund or ask the bankruptcy court or go through the claims process to get a refund. And you'll probably get a portion of that refund, uh, not the entire thing. And are there any important dates that these customers need to be aware of? 
Uh, yes, there are some two known dates and future dates that we don't have yet. The first date is January 12th is the Vans Aircraft Meeting of Creditors, which is going to be held in Portland, Oregon. However, anyone can attend by telephone, and there is a, a phone number and an access code that's posted in the notice to the Chapter 11 that all the creditors shall receive in the mail shortly. Uh, in addition, uh, they have assigned the claims deadline. This is the deadline in which all claims have to be filed, uh, any sort of claim. It could be uh, if you believe Vans Aircraft owes you money in any way for anything, February 12th is your deadline. You can find the full interview with Colin and Jeremy on our YouTube channel. Reliable Robotics has achieved a major milestone for the aviation industry, an uncrewed test flight of a Cessna Caravan. So the FAA-approved test flight took place November 21st in California's San Francisco Bay Area. It lasted about 12 minutes. Now, it was being controlled by a pilot who was 50 miles away. Reliable Robotics seeks to improve aviation safety through automation and transform how people and cargo travel around the world. We'll have more on Reliable Robotics in an upcoming show. Well, if you're looking for a modern trainer for your primary training or for advanced training, we've put together a list of five popular trainers that have been introduced since the year 2000. In the light sport aircraft market, the Vans RB12 and the Remos G3 GX are two popular options. The Cirrus SR22 dominates the high performance piston single market, and the Diamond DA42 and Technim P2006T are strong multi trainers. Check out the full video on our YouTube channel and watch for an upcoming article on AOPA's Flight Training Magazine. It's called Y2K Trainers and it's a comprehensive list of the trainers that have been introduced since the year 2000 and uh, hopefully most of you are old enough to remember Y2K so uh, you get that little pun there. Okay now here is a trainer from a different era. It's the Beach AT-11 World War II trainer. So owner John Hess gives us a walk around of this rare aircraft. This is a Beechcraft AT-11. And a Beechcraft AT-11 was a bombardier trainer during World War II. Back in 1941, Hap Arnold was paying a visit to the Beechcraft assembly line and noticed an airplane very similar to this and asked what it was about. And they said it was a, a bomber being built for the Chinese government. Hap Arnold, uh, took it upon himself and uh, thought about the, being able to use this for a bombardier trainer for the U.S. Army Air Corps. So that what they would do is take two students with five bombs apiece and they could sit in the nose with an instructor and just practice dropping those bombs and get their accuracy good. He would have had bombs on both sides, bomb bays, uh, both sides, five on each. But after the war, it was converted over completely to passenger type interior. So. I wanted to go back more original, but I also want to be able to fly with my family and friends and go to air shows and things. So we kept some of the seats on the left side of the airplane so we could have more room for, for that passenger cap capability, but also be able to go back to the bombs on the right-hand side so that you'd be able to see what they would have normally been doing. So in, in its operational use, you'd have 10 bombs, five on each side, instead of the, all these seats. Originally, they built almost 1,600 AT-11s but many of them were turned back into Beechcraft to be converted to C-45G and H's. So not many of them survived after, after they were turned in. The ones that did survive, they were either sent to other countries or derelict and just not worth saving with spar inspections and things. So there's probably about 40 of them that we know of, but most of those are in museums and they're just never gonna fly again. So there's probably less than a dozen that could fly and about five of them that fly within a, a year's time. You might have five of them that ever take to the skies. Well, we love doing it, and we've been able to meet with a lot of veterans that flew these airplanes in, uh, in the past, and there's, uh, unfortunately there's not many of them around now to tell us their stories, but they had such fond memories of, of flying these airplanes and training in them, and of course, it was a huge deal to, to go in World War II but they, uh, this was a small part of their training, but it was sure was memorable. So we, it was important to us to kind of bring it back for them because they're so rare, 
they you just don't see these very often and it was great for them to be able to relive it and show us the, what they did back then. Well, we got to keep them flying. I think it's so important to do it. And these are super safe airplanes. They're very uh, reliable. We just need to make sure that we're do it, you know, doing them justice by taking good care of them and hopefully getting them out there to help educate our next generations. John, thanks for preserving this piece of history, keeping it flying, and for sharing the story with us. Our final story this week, pilots spreading holiday cheer. Last weekend, AOPA President Mark Baker, his wife Joanne, and about 30 aircraft flew to Tangier Island. That's a small crabbing village that has a couple hundred residents. Uh, it's in the Chesapeake Bay. So the Tangier Holly Run has been an annual tradition since 1966. Pilots fly to Tangier Island and deliver gifts including school supplies, holiday greenery like holly, and necessities for children and adults. The pilot volunteers first got together at Bay Bridge Airport in Maryland for a pancake breakfast, and then they loaded up with supplies before flying out to Tangier Island. So Mark flew his own Cessna 208 caravan. Santa Claus even showed up in a Vans RV7A and handed out candy canes to the kids. First off, it was a great day, a beautiful morning over the bay and a little on, on top of a layer of fog down below. But for this airplane, it was very fun. You know, it's just fun to see people getting excited about doing something that's about aviation and what a beautiful morning. What a heartwarming way to kick off the holidays. Hey, let us know in the comments below if you have done any holiday flights this year to help others in need delivering presents or necessities or anything to brighten people's day. We'd love to see how you're using general aviation for that. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Fly with AOPA. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all our latest videos. And we leave you with some cool footage of helicopters harvesting Christmas trees in Oregon. Be sure to send in your favorite flying videos. You just might see them on an upcoming show. And if you're not already an AOPA pilot, we'd love for you to join us. Just click the link at the end of this video to learn more about our trial membership. We'll see you next week.